What is up, YouTube? What is up, family? We have another Patreon request, and this one is going to be a while. 48 minutes, but I said it before. I'll say it again. When it comes to Wonderland, I could watch four hours in a row. This is just... I can't wait. 48 minutes of the model railway paradise. Oof. Let's go. Can't I can't wait. Let's go. I, I'm going to get blown away all over again like I've never seen this before. Seriously. That's what this 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 is what this place does to me. Monumental. See, just looking at this, right? If you didn't know about this place, you would say, "Oh, wow, this is this is beautiful. Look at this city." Like you would have no clue this is a model. I mean, I, uh, I, I'm three seconds in. I'm already blown away. This is what's gonna happen. All right, let's go. Ay ay ay. Monumental buildings. Gigantic railway stations. And a digital command center that controls everything. Hundreds of thousands of figures, including even the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. It's just fantasy. We're in Wunderland. Ghostbusters. I think being a bit crazy is a major job requirement for working in Wunderland. This is just amazing, isn't it? A creative team that constantly thinks on a scale of 1 to 87. Scale of 1 to 87. Oh, man. You gotta love them. You gotta love them. Always thinking outside the box. Nowhere in this country, because we've become the softest country in the world now, would they be allowed, would, would you be allowed to see this? <gasps> what if my 12-year-old sees that? Oh, no, take that out. And they would. They would take it out. Oh, you're right. That's not appropriate. It's, it's, mm. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. I will start bad mouthing my country like you never even knew was possible. It's like, whew. okay, let's go. Anyway, this is true genius. This is personality. This is humor. This is being human. Anyway, let's go. <clears throat> hundreds of trains, hundreds of meters of track, and tinkerers for whom no challenge is too great. If you make a mistake at the beginning, it has an effect on the whole thing right down the line. I can see that. Millimeter perfect precision under constant observation. Everything has to fit exactly, even when time is pressing. State of the art technology that amazes thousands of visitors. See, even, even with this, I have to pause a lot. State of the art technology that amazes. Because scenes like this, this is they're only up on the screen for like three seconds. <sighs> it's just absolutely amazing. The detail is absolutely amazing. Thousands. My God. Brilliant. Thousands of visitors every year and a constant stream of breathtaking ideas. The worst it can do is go wrong. Here, yeah. everything is possible. That was just a preview. Five in the morning. The big cleanup before the big day at the biggest model railway in the world. Careful, careful, careful. Lift it up a bit higher. Yes, I've got it. At the moment, Petra Atfi and Bastian Jakoba still have the whole railway to themselves. A well-coordinated team, because even vacuum cleaning is precision work here. You do occasionally vacuum up a few figures by mistake, but you notice that too because they always rattle. You hear it as soon as you've done it, so you can just open it up afterwards. And sometimes you pick five or six figures out again and stick them back where they belong. So it's not really a problem. There'll always be some losses. Vacuum cleaning the entire 1,500 square meter model village with all its buildings, vehicles and inhabitants 
would probably take more than a year to complete. Yeah. We're never finished, never. You can't just say, we'll start down here, and in three months, we'll be finished at the other end. Like I said, we have a look around every morning, and then we decide where to go. Las Vegas, America, perhaps, or Knuffingen. It's always dirtiest there. Or the airport. We know we definitely have to go there at least once a week. Today, the cleaning team has to go into oh, the Alps. What? It's a good job there are hidden maintenance hatches throughout the entire complex. Absolute. See, I would have blown it right here. I would be done with my model. Like, ah, oh, it came out wonderful. I did such a good job. This looks amazing. What? Oh, no. That's not working right there in the middle? How the hell do I get to it? How do I get to it to fix it without destroying everything I made? This is brilliant. Of course, of course. You got to always have a place that you can get to. And they got a freaking door that opens up out of the mountain. They've thought of everything. Everything. Nevertheless, oh. Petra Atfi really has to stretch out while she's dusting. This is amazing. After all, even at a scale of 1 to 87, the mountains are still quite high. Oh my god. You gotta clean this thing. I didn't even know that. Just before 8, the first visitors have already arrived. It's the school holidays. Peak season at Miniatur Wunderland. Despite Wunderland. opening times from morning till midnight, the place is always busy all the time. I wonder why. Frederick Braun is ever present. He and his brother Gerrit founded Miniatur Wunderland in 2001. Meanwhile, they've had to introduce a new reservation system. Visitors book their tickets online in advance for a set time window. There's no other way to cope with the masses of people. Oh my God. We dreamed of having 100 to 150,000 visitors a year. That's about 1,000 visitors a day during the main holiday period. Currently, they're attracting much higher numbers. Today alone, we'll see around 5,000 people arriving. Oh my God. Miniatur Wunderland has long been one of the main attractions in Hamburg. Visitors don't only come from all over Germany, but increasingly from abroad as well. Only about 10% come from Hamburg. I think 25 or 30% from 150 kilometers around the city. After six months, I got an email from someone in Tokyo asking if I was the guy with the model railway. He'd like to come and see it, and soon flew in from Tokyo. Hey, if I had the money. More than a million people come to see Miniatur Wunderland every year. It's a great attraction for both young and old. The gigantic track network. The lovingly crafted landscapes. The elaborate buildings. Everything's perfect. Those coming here are given plenty to see. Everything's the detail is just the statistics are impressive. 1,040 model trains travel along 15,400 meters of tracks. There are 4,110 buildings and bridges inhabited by some 260,000 figures. Oh, man. Over 760,000 hours of work culminated in the creation of this 16 million euro miniature world. Wow. That's crazy how much money it costs. Wow. I'm sure he's made it back by now. The dimensions are just amazing. Yeah, this is amazing. The There's is so amazing. much here that's simply unique worldwide. The airport, with the planes taking off and landing automatically. Look at those mountains. The sheer length of the rail network. Detail. Or also the fact that Hamburg's soccer team scores goal after goal. 
Here, even the Trance Rapid roars through Lower Saxony, while old trams rattle through Rome and freight trains through the Grand Canyon. Oh my God, I can't, this is too amazing. And Hamburg's Ebb Philharmonic Hall was opened here in 2013, four years before the original. Oh my God. Behind all this, there are many creative minds at work. Yeah. In particular, Wunderland founder Friedrich Braun, a quick meeting at the railway tunnel. That's absolutely fantastic. And when all the lights go on up there, have you seen it? Yeah. On the left and right sides of the wall at about that height. There should be a train as well, though that terminates here. There is one. A very long one that really stops here. Yeah. That'll have to be programmed perfectly. Yeah. You do that the first time, and then it gets a bit worn down and suddenly stops over here. Yeah, but the guys will get that sorted out. So it terminates here. And that's where they get on. What lots of people don't know is that we've got 300 people working in Wunderland now. And that terrifies Garrett and me because we're not typical entrepreneurs. We've had no training. It was all learning by doing. And we're not typical bosses either. But perhaps that's precisely why it's worked out somehow. We've grown from 40 people when we started. And we still say it's like a family, even with 300 people. And this family is always busy. Model makers are fitting a building into place. They have to take care not to tread on anything and break it by mistake. Oh my God. For in this miniature world, they are giants. It's true. One false move could destroy an entire district. You imagine if you lose your balance and fall? You imagine the damage? I should put this on, shouldn't I? I don't think I need to. Wait, wait, wait. Now make sure. Sometimes you see details where, if it's too quick, you miss it. When Wunderland was opened, there were three sections. The imaginary capital city Knuffingen, with around 10,000 inhabitants. Central Germany, with the Harz Mountains. And Austria, along with numerous railway lines. A short time later, Wunderland's hometown was added. Hamburg, with everything that makes this Hanseatic city what it is. Look at that. Oh, man. Look at the water. In 2003 came the leap across the Atlantic to America, with a mini Las Vegas in the true glitz and glamour style of the original. They are good, man. They are good. Two yeah, years best. later saw the addition of Scandinavia and a very special highlight, the North Baltic Sea. Is that real water? Filled with 33,000 liters of real water. Oh, it is real water. Yeah, of course, why not? And 25 manually controlled crews and container ships. All combined with a glittery snowy landscape. Oh, I never saw this. The jet skis. Since 2007, Switzerland has also been part of the Miniatur Wunderland, with its imposing mountains. An especially popular feature here is an open air concert by Swiss artist DJ Bobo. I'm gonna have to talk to the owner. I'm gonna have to talk to the owner. We're gonna have to have a Rumstein concert going here somewhere. When the new edition of something opens, we gotta put a Rumstein concert in there. What do you guys think? Come on, we gotta have a Rumstein concert. I mean, come on. I mean, this is amazing. No joke. It's crazy. Now we just need a hundred little trucks building this massive stage, and then Rumstein comes out. This crowd times a hundred. Boom, you're ready to go. What do you say? Come on. What do you think? What's the owner? What's the owner's name again? I'll just call you Mr. Owner. Mr. Brilliant Genius Owner. What do you think? Rumstein concert? In the future, maybe? What do you think? Yeah. No? All right, well, maybe. Think about it, okay? 
Think about it. And in 2011, after almost six years of construction, Knufigen Airport was finally opened. Six it's years. the only one of its kind in the world. More airport. than 40 aircraft move around the airport site independently, with takeoffs and landings every minute. We did a whole video on this alone. The entire facility, meanwhile, covers several floors of an historic warehouse building in Hamburg's Speicherstadt district. It consists of nine interconnected country sections. Wow. I see a lot of room for, for expansion. Night falls every 15 minutes in Wunderland. Guys, seriously. Just look, just seriously. Come on. The best in the world, right here. And then over 330,000 LEDs bring light into the darkness. What was initially the mad idea of the two brothers, Friedrich and Gerrit Braun, has now become one of the main tourist attractions in Hamburg. Miniatur Wunderland offers its visitors an infinite number of photo opportunities. It's never boring here. Everything is constant. Constantly in motion. There's a lot of humor in this place, too. Almost every day, something somewhere needs to be repaired or optimized. In hundreds of mini scenes, the model makers relate little stories. Even in tiny concealed places on the rear side of the layout, where hardly any visitors ever go. Some of these scenes are weird. Others, brutal. Look at this. You got a gang fight going on, bullet holes in the car. Oh, my God. Or not exactly G-rated. <laughs> yeah. you know Visitors point. can set about 200 of them in motion at the push of a button. These are the ones that bring Miniatur Wunderland to life. Yeah, that's, look at this. Whether it's a forensics team after a body has been discovered in the water. I've seen that. Anglers on the Hamburg docks. Or a trip in a hot air balloon. In Miniatur Wunderland, there's always something going on. Elephants breaking out of a circus. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Chimpanzees relaxing on a beach. Here, the Pope Mobile has a flat tire. I never saw that. Large scale fire brigade operations occur almost every minute. The water from the fire hose in this case is made of cotton wool, and the fire is simulated by colored LEDs. Yeah, brilliant. For the model makers, however, there's no time for playing. They've got to get to the construction site. Miniatur Wunderland is to continue expanding and is now having a further attraction added, Italy. At 90 square meters, it will be one of the largest sections so far and one of the most elaborate. Most of Rome's buildings are already standing. Now it's time for the details. The builders carefully cut holes in the floor for the fountains that will soon be cascading here. To prepare for this, some of the model makers even traveled to Italy and returned with hundreds of photos and lots of ideas. Gaston Burkhardt was in Cinque Terre. The village of Rio Maggiore held a special appeal for him, so he's now immortalized it here on a scale of 1 to 87. We've only made references to the village because it looks different in reality. It's difficult to include something like that because I just have a bit of space here and a bit there. The important thing for us was the tunnel. That's original, and that's original too. Some of the houses are original and some are made up. You can't reproduce it all in such detail. 
Unbelievable. The model maker's workshop. The work involved. Everyone is occupied with Italy at the moment. As time is pressing, the team are working under great pressure. For the new section, 450 buildings have to be completed by hand. It's the only way to give the models their unique appearance. Most of the figures are made and painted in the workshop as well. Susanna Sanda is putting the finishing touches on a Roman residential block. As a dog lover, she never misses an opportunity to put a four-legged friend into her models. <laughs> there are no limits to the imagination here. There are no rules. There should always be something funny in there, something hidden. But that's the best part, just being able to say, that's the way I'd like to see it. Next door to the outfitter's shop for the clergy, Susanna Sanda has put in an art gallery. My God. And conveniently located one floor above is the artist's studio, complete with a naked model. Look at that. He's drawing her. All finished. The block of houses can now be taken to its destination in Rome very carefully. They don't want anything to break now. I wonder how many trains... I wonder how many moving parts break. Because as a, as a train hobbyist, you're going to have a layout. You're going to have trains. You're not going to have them running every single day. Only when you have time, you're going to go and enjoy your thing. You're going to run it. But everything here is running 24. Well, when they close, I'm sure it turns off finally. But I would say, what, 12, 15 hours a day, it's on. So how often do they have to replace those engines? You know, moving parts equals broke, broken stuff, always. That's the way it works. I can't imagine. And you got to oil the engines, I think. You have to oil the wheels. You know, all the parts that intertwine have to be oiled and, and greased properly uh, there's just too much work in here to even think of the building is one of 450 handmade houses in the new section prefabricated model kits haven't been used in miniatur wunderland for a long time what's the point when your model makers are such perfectionists is that the truth this model consists of hundreds of individual parts. If it's dropped now, weeks of hard work would have been for nothing. But it all goes well. The building fits exactly into the intended gap. The Roman street is complete. Back to the workshop. Christian Rosenau is an expert on aging. He makes sure the buildings and walls are given a realistic patina. With the help of special pigments, he transforms this gleaming white model into antique masonry. We have photos of the originals, like these here, for example. That's what we use as a basis and try to recreate them as far as possible. We have to keep an eye on the time, of course. It can't take forever. And then we try to integrate it into the layout. So we stick to the originals as far as we can. But every now and then, we've no limits, so we can do what we need to, or have to, or would like to. Almost perfect, and very close to the original. No Next door, his colleague Leo Enslin is plagued by quite different worries. He has to finish the Sistine Chapel, but he hasn't yet found the right floor surface. It's a tricky puzzle. You have to print out a test sheet and then see what it looks like. And then you find things and think, yes, that's the way to go. 
And then you see that they look like garbage, and then, well, you gotta improvise. And then the printer doesn't work. Oh well. This venerable chapel has been in Sleen's problem for weeks now, and it's proving to be a serious test for his patience. The numerous details that must be faithful to the original require the highest concentration. Oh, especially when it gets all fiddly and you can't get in here with both hands and it's already half built so you can't take it to pieces. But the windows have to be clean and you can't reach them to do it. There's so much to pay attention to. And if you make a mistake at the beginning, <laughs> it has an effect on the whole thing right down the line, so to speak. Oh, God. But at least the internal lighting works. So to begin with, I was like, it all works, it's all so small, no one can see it anyway. But you eventually come to a point where you start turning into a perfectionist, just for yourself. And then it's all about the final 1% when you think, yes, it's got to be done like that, otherwise I'm not being true to myself, so to speak. Next door, in the technical workshop. A discussion about St. Peter's Basilica, which is about to be connected up to the power supply. I'm wondering whether I should take one of these little black plugs we used on the cable car cabins and glue it in here and just put this on top. But then I've got this problem with, or do you think? Yeah, just put it together now and you can see right away how tricky it is. And then you've got a five-pole connector and a pin strip in there too, right? Right, it'll just break. Ah, uh, that'll never work. No. St. Peter's is also one of a kind. It was assembled by the model makers after months of development. And so that it can later shine in all its splendor, Nina Vikost has to fit it out with dozens of LEDs. To do so, she needs several meters of cable. That's why we do it bit by bit. For instance, I started wiring up the windows here on the outside, and then gradually worked through this row, and then this one, then these cardboard boxes for the towers. I did it piece by piece, so I wouldn't get all the cables mixed up. When you then see you've finished the work and got the job done on time, that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. And then you hope that nothing goes wrong. Definitely not easy, especially since the technicians and model makers work under constant observation. Because most of the workshops are also accessible for the visitors. Oh, that's what they meant, okay. <clears throat> Countless meters of cable later, the job's finally done. St. Peter's Basilica is approaching completion. A masterpiece made of 22,000 individual parts, so it's hardly a lightweight. 22,000? Nevertheless, the modelers have to operate with extreme care and attention. The slightest misjudgment now could have disastrous consequences. The cables fit perfectly, they're not in the way of the tracks. That's great, the trains can get by, all good. Design and construction took almost two years. Now, all that's missing are the cable connections underneath the model. My God. Down here, there are hundreds of cables and wires. But even so, technician Kenneth Mundel knows his way around this cable jungle perfectly. 
Here we have, I don't know, around 300 street lights in the Rome section alone, but we don't switch them all on individually, of course. In the real world, too, each street is basically wired with three phases, and that's how we do it as well. And each phase has a slight delay from the moment it's switched on, and that creates quite a colorful picture when all the lamps light up one after the other. But we can bundle these cables together relatively easily, so it looks like less and less. We must have about 10 times as many cables lying around in here than we actually need for the switchable contacts. Underneath the model complex is a different world of cables and connections. Only the technicians know their way around here. For better orientation, they follow a strict color code. Just power supply. That's only the power supply for the railway, nothing else. Here's a nice bundle that goes all the way along here. These are the cables for the points, for the signals. The trains run according to the signals. Just like in reality, the signals have to be there. And that works on this power line. This is only electricity here, and over here we have all the cables with the different colors, as you can see. For example, yellow is for normal house and apartment lights. Here, red is for street lighting. White with purple and blue, that'll be for a car and its indicator. And that's how we find our way around. Oh, yeah, no problem. Hundreds of kilometers of cables have already been laid in Miniatur Wunderland, Simple. and there's no end in sight. Oh, my God. Imagine if one thing goes wrong. Oh, my God. Forget it. I don't even want to think about it. Here, there are a number of buildings. You can tell from these bundles. Each of these bundles with yellow, blue, and sometimes black is for a building. And here, around the outside, as you can see, there's a street. That's an access road to this small housing estate. I know what's up there. That's why I can say it's a housing estate. Here, you can tell that this is for street lights. And when we see from up there that a street light's gone out, we can count along here to find out exactly which of these lights it is. And if the cable is actually the problem, we can look down here and find exactly where it is. On the level above, St. Peter's Basilica is now in the right position, but the builders are not completely satisfied yet. The problem we have now is that because there are now cables everywhere as well, and we haven't had it set up like this before, lots of things don't fit. That means unscrewing everything we've already screwed together. And then there was a plug missing. And so the electrical people had to get that ready. Yeah, it's always a bit tense over the last few meters. But the most important thing is that everything looks perfect in the end. And anyway, it would be boring if everything worked right away. Perhaps some heavier machinery will do the trick. Wait, wait, wait. Pull it out again. Yeah, right back in again. You should never forget that it's only a toy. But it's quite an expensive toy. Yeah, that's for sure. And there's your outcome when everything's working the way it should. Mind-blowing. Quite close by, there's an ominous rumbling. Vesuvius. The volcano is soon to be one of the main attractions of the New Italy section making the nightly eruptions look as realistic as possible was a major challenge for the model makers and technicians creativity this completely in-house construction packed full of technical gadgetry took two whole years to develop two years for one volcano I don't even know what to say anymore about this this Wonderland. I, I really don't. I don't know what to say anymore. Just let your eyes do the walking and talking, you know? Alexander Wolf is the master of this mountain of fire. So, let's get to work on the exhaust control system. Special chains provide the perfect lava look. These are actually industrial chains from beverage producers and we've attached a six millimeter plexiglass plate to them. 
On top of this, we modeled a larva-like mass using silicon and soot. And we can illuminate the entire chain from the side through this plexiglass plate. The light then penetrates through to the surface, and it actually looks like genuine lava. The result is spectacular and frighteningly real. That is insane. Seriously. What the hell? Below Vesuvius, of course, there's a vast amount of technology to ensure the perfect coordination of sound, light, movement, and smoke. Controlled by a computer program specially developed for this purpose. Now it's just a matter of finding the ideal settings. We're in an experimental phase again, how much smoke we can use. How strong does the ventilator have to be? Will we have to increase the pipe cross-section to get more smoke? That's what we're still trying out, but things are looking quite good. Building Vesuvius took almost two years. 12 months for development, two months for the steel and timber construction, and five months to install the technology. And of course, there were also occasions when things went wrong. No. The worst that can do is go wrong. That's all. Then you might bang and hiss a bit and we'll all laugh. And then we'll just do it a different way and it might work. Of course, we it's a great attitude. do apply a bit of common sense and reason. But basically, the approach is trial and error. There's not much time left. Only two days until the opening. Unbelievable. Look at this. There's still plenty to do. Look at this. The, this all has to be pre-planned. Do at another place as well. Oh my God. So then, give me that piece. That should be the last one, right? Yes, that should be the last. Very soon, more than a hundred trains should rattle through Italy. For this purpose, Wolfgang Wicht has laid over two and a half kilometers of tracks, installed 100 signals and more than 400 points. I've already laid a total of 16,000 meters of track and about 3,250 points. And because I've been here so long, right from the start, I've gained a bit of experience in dealing with all the rolling stock and things like that. Oh my God. More than 1,000 HO gauge trains wind their way through Miniatur Wunderland. From high speed trains to rack railways. The longest train measures just less than 15 meters. 1,270 signals and around 50 computers ensure the traffic runs smoothly. Look at the cars and the traffic. And Miniatur Wunderland's rail network is 13 kilometers long. Once the new Italy section is opened, it will even be over 15. In reality, that corresponds to a total track length of about 1,340 kilometers. All sections are interconnected and can be accessed by all trains. Of course. Whenever new trains are purchased, their first stop is the locomotive workshop. Uh, all right. Mike Kostad and his colleagues make sure that the newcomers soon fit in well with the rest of the fleet. For Italy alone, more than 100 new locomotives were acquired and well over 800 wagons. They now need to be tuned. Right. So what we change is we install an electric contact to give us a power connection to the wagon so the trains will run more reliably and we can light up the passenger wagons. We put decoders in them because our railway is digital and so every locomotive needs its own decoder. Chinese to me. Altogether, there are well over 1,000 trains and every single one of them is controlled by computer. The same applies to the almost 300 cars and trucks on the roads. 
For them too, a dedicated computer program was developed that steers them through Miniatur Wunderland. The program provides each vehicle with a brain of its own, so to speak, which enables it to make its own decisions, like complying with the right-of-way regulations, for example. At the rear of the model complex, a number of charging stations can be found. Once their battery reaches a certain level, trucks automatically drive in and are recharged. Are you serious? What? They're running off. I, I thought, oh, these are the trucks. Oh my God, I'm thinking train. I'm thinking train. Uh, but still, this is mind blowing. I thought it was all ran by a magnet. Each one has their own little power source. I thought it was the whole rail was the power source. Oh my God. And they're smart enough to go recharge. This is smarter than cars today, real cars. Afterwards, they set off on their way again, Look. all by themselves. Oh my. That is so... Oh my God. The command center, the nerve center of Miniatur Wunderland. Wow. Here, staff members monitor the trains and vehicles. Controlling them is carried out by computers. Should a problem arise, it can be solved from here in the shortest possible time. I wish they would show so the way it works is that a train or a certain number of trains is activated in the morning when the complex is switched on, and they carry on running in automatic mode, do one circuit and then drive into the terminus. Then another train is activated and it does a circuit as well. You can see when a train is active when this shows red here at the front. That means it's active and is waiting for its route to clear. As soon as it leaves, it takes a yellow route, like the one you can see here at the front. And then you can see precisely which way the train will go next, and that means that if any problems arise, we can see exactly where the train is. Working here requires extreme concentration because malfunctions can occur again and again. Here's an indication for a short circuit in the USA section. Oh, okay. It's a bit difficult to see at the moment, of course, because it's so dark. So I'd say I'll go down and have a look at what it is before anything else breaks down. Gérard Beckmann makes his way through the complex. Careful. He has to get to America because the edge of the Grand Canyon is where the broken down train has come to a standstill. Okay. Oh, I see. It, it, it's off the trail, the rail. Hmm. Wow, so they actually do derail. I was going to say, I just got, they have to derail at some point. Maybe once, uh, you know, with a thousand trains or whatever. Fortunately, the technician can fix the problem quickly. That's awesome. He's notified and everything from the computer. Command center for Gerard. Yeah. Switch USA 2 back on, please, and start the train up again. Everything back to normal. Crazy. We have a number of options. We can climb on top of the model. It's almost always strong enough and accessible. If that's not possible, there are hatches so we can come up from underneath. Or sometimes we just have to stretch out a hand as far as we can and try and reach it somehow. Look at this guy. The finishing touches in Italy. Look at this. The model makers and technicians have only one more day before opening. And it's all far from being perfect. Tina Fischer is responsible for St. Peter's Square, but at the moment, it's still rather empty. She needs people, tourists, and here in the modeling storeroom, there are masses of them. All painted by hand and lovingly formed. Love it. Love it. 
Now they only need to be spread around the square. Super glue keeps them firmly in place. The current situation is that we don't have any large events for which St. Peter's Square would be packed with visitors. It's more of a normal day. We try to keep to pictures or to the situation we saw when we were there, and nothing special was going on. So we are trying to make sure that it's not too full or too empty, mm. but as realistic as possible, and that's actually what makes it so difficult. And the attention to detail is, is, is off the charts from every person that works here. Here too, working under constant observation. With dozens of enthusiastic onlookers behind you, it's not always easy to keep a steady hand. Christian Chu is the expert for water in Miniatur Wunderland. And on the Italian Riviera, he's really got his work cut out for him. You have to actually think about how waves work around a ship. You can't just squirt something in there and dab around a bit. And the problem is that on a 1 to 87... Look at that. That's, a, that's perfect. ...in scale, the wave is so small, it would hardly be visible. So we exaggerate a little, and so they drive around with a bit more speed. A little white paint adds the finishing touches. So now the final act, so to speak. I try to put some white on the top edges by graining them very lightly, because when a wave breaks, there's always a bit of foam on the top. I'll make it a bit more obvious than it would be in reality, so it'll be noticed. Unbelievable, really. I mean, really. Oh, that came out perfect. Ultimately, this gives the model that final 10% extra that make people say, wow. It suddenly starts to reflect. And if you look at it at the right kind of angle, you can see the mountain and the whole town reflected in the water. That's just like the perfect finish. And then you realize we're about to open. And that's why it's always exciting to see if it's actually going to work. But it looks perfect. And we're all really proud. Everything looks perfect. Everything. Beginning to end. Gaston Bourcott is not quite satisfied yet. His ice cream parlor is... Is that not the typical German mustache right there? Is that not it right there? Look at the perfection. <laughs> wow. This guy's no joke. He asked this guy, hey, what do you do for a living? Said, I, I work for model, little model trains and, and, and what? You do what for a living? This is the kind of guy you'd be like, oh, you don't, walking around with big barrels on his shoulder, you know, like big tough guy. Oh, you work at a little, you, uh, oh my God, I almost said little. Uh, you work at the biggest Wonderland model railway in the entire world. Oh, that's what you do for a living. Oh, okay. I mean, who would guess that? But that's a cool mustache. I'm not going to lie. I wonder if I could do that. No, just, no, I think I need, no, can't do it. No. It's getting a lighting system, but it's not working out quite how it should. I have these special little lamps that Leo made for me because I wanted them this way. But it's round and keeps slipping away. And the wire is so stiff that you can't get hold very well to bend it. So you've just got to try somehow. You got to be patient. I was just going to say patience, 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 patience. Patience pays off in the end. Rio Maggiore is almost finished. A colorful Italian coastal village with lots of lively inhabitants. All fixed into place with super glue. Look at that. My God. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. It really is beautiful. I don't know how they do this. I really don't. And the Sistine Chapel, too, 
is finally ready to be installed into the complex. If it would only fit. Yeah, I've never seen this. This is like wild. Got the Coliseum. I can only assume that all that carrying back and forth, taking it out, moving it around, is somehow warped the entire building. But eventually, it fits after all. The Sistine Chapel shining in all its splendor. And if you look very closely, you can even see its mosaic floor. From the printer that he did before. Unbelievable. Holger Balash is the man responsible for the head of the Catholic Church. He's still working on one of almost 200 push-button actions. These push-button actions are to show the Pope's daily routine. Here, the different rooms in his residence are reproduced. And it starts, of course, with getting up. Morning prayers, and then it continues. Depending on where he is in his daily routine, the little room lights up. So then you can see that he's working somewhere, or reading the morning paper, etc., etc. It's all designed so that it can be taken out, because we might get another pope again at some point. And white smoke rises, and then we know we have to make changes. My God. So. So he's in every room, but... It I see what happens. Yeah, all right. yeah, brilliant. He's in every room, and then they'd light up the room. There was this way you can't see him in the other room, and now he looks like he's what he does on a daily basis. And every... these guys are so smart. So I mean, these these are probably one of the smartest people I've ever seen in my entire life. But this everybody involved, all three hundred, all three hundred workers, just just the smartest, brilliant, most I, like I have no words. I just I can't believe it. For this all to come together so well, and the problems that they have to, ah, uh, this is, I can't believe we're almost done. Five minutes. Let's right, see let's what go. lights up. The study, for example. Or downstairs. Ah, that's another room. And we don't know exactly what's going on there. For now, we've roughly described it as a table tennis room. But it's really a secret room where the Pope can let himself go a bit. And then the TV, of course, in the evenings. The Pope watches it to take his mind off things. Tonight we put the life of Brian on. Are you kidding me? And suddenly, it's all over. Oh yeah, now it's time to drink and celebrate, hell yeah. They've actually done it. After three years of building and more than 180,000 working hours, Italy is finished at last, just in time. Afternoon or not, it's more than enough reason for celebration. Absolutely. Because Italy has turned out perfectly. Outstanding. Outstanding. No section of Minia to a Wunderland has ever been as elaborately worked on and as expensive as this one, or has been so close to the original motifs. Unbelievable. Look at that beach. Guys, seriously, this is, this, my brain is melting. It's melting. Is that little tunnel that we're showing us? Such attention to detail blurs the borders between model and reality. A reflection in the water. And even the link between the modern and the antique has worked perfectly.
boss and founder, Frederik Braun, is also extremely satisfied with the result. All the more so, since the Italy section was a project very close to his heart. But he doesn't have much time to enjoy the moment. He already has new plans in mind. As soon as Italy is open, he intends to carry on building, as Miniatur Wunderland is still far from complete. A bridge is planned to connect these two warehouse buildings. I heard about this. Can you imagine? Oh, man. Providing even more space for spectacular model landscapes. Our idea is to build France here at some point with the English Channel under the bridge. That's where the trains will run. So you walk along the bridge with a great view down onto the boats on the one side. And on the other side, you walk along the model, which is the English Channel with a piece of France added. Then the trains run into the tunnel and you carry on watching the ships for a bit. And over there, you go on to England. So then we'll take parts of the ceiling out over there to make it a very high section and perhaps then carry on into Scotland, a real fairy tale. And then when it's finished, we'll come back and finish building France. That'll take a good 10 to 15 years, but we'll carry on after that too. To have that imagination, that vision. This is a never ending project. Evening falls in Hamburg. The day at Miniatur Wunderland comes to an end. You guys are right, there's no way in a million years you could do this in one day. Nope, not even close. But the ideas in the creative minds of the model makers probably never will. And so this 1 to 87 scale world will continue to grow. Absolutely incredible. Oh my God, I don't even know what to say. 48 minutes, boom, gone, just like that. Oh my God, what did I just see? I'm, I'm seriously, my brain, it, it just, it can't comprehend. I feel like I'm three years old. Like, I don't even know what I just, I, just, I can't, I can't, I can't talk to you about it. <laughs> I, 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 the, the information in my head right now is just, it's too much. It's too much. Absolutely, really. I mean, I, I've, I think I've tried to use every adjective I can think of. Uh, it's just, it's just beyond brilliant. It's just beyond. It's pure brilliance, pure brilliance, pure at its finest. There's nothing that can possibly be better than this in the world. Germany's got it, man. Germany has it. You guys are absolutely number one, right here, no doubt. Not even close. There's not even a close second. Oof. Oh, Mr. Patreon, once again. Yep, you know your stuff. You know your stuff. You know what to show me. Uh, it was a good one. This was a fantastic. Between this and the airport already, uh, you know, what more is there to see now? Now we wait. We wait for France, I guess. All right, guys. Anyway, whew, this has been a long video. So I know right now you guys are probably half sleeping, half have left already. You know, I know how it is. 48 is a long time. All right. So anyway, take care. Peace out. Have a good night.